Hello, my name is Stefan Tegas and I'm going to talk to you about using drawings and quizzes to teach anatomy. I'm going to take advantage of the video format by not reading my slides. I'm confident that you can do that yourselves and by occasionally asking you to pause the video and do some activity on your own. If you do these activities, you'll get more out of this presentation. Next slide, please. Here's a list of my goals and objectives, which you can read on your own if you want to pause the video. The intent of this video is to present a detailed example of using drawings and quizzes to teach anatomy, with an emphasis on practical tips and techniques that anyone can use to teach students and residents. In my example, I'll use the larynx because it's such an interesting structure, but I use these same techniques to teach first-year medical students the cross-sectional anatomy of 14 other body parts during their anatomy course. These techniques can easily be adapted for other topics. We'll also learn how to make and use QR codes. Next slide, please. I won't be covering any theoretical background, but here's a list of suggested reading if you're interested. Welcome to art school. The first rule of art school is not to worry about how your art looks. At age 52, I took an undergraduate painting and drawing class, and this quote is my actual formative feedback. Don't worry, we can't all be like da Vinci. Luckily, making simple drawings is just fine. In fact, a simple drawing that includes the most important features of a structure helps students better understand the anatomy. With simple drawings, you're also much likelier to get your students to draw along with you which helps them learn. When I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, an art correspondent school advertised its course by challenging people to submit drawings of Tippy the turtle. Tippy is wearing a turtleneck, but he's missing the most important feature of a turtle, the shell. Which brings us to the second rule of art school. When I draw, I follow a three-step process. Number one, abstract. Number two, simplify. And number three, exaggerate. When you abstract, you identify the most distinctive and important features of what you're drawing. In the case of a turtle, it's the shell. Shells are actually complex structures, but we simplify our drawing by representing the shell as an oval. It may help to exaggerate some features. In this case, I added a decoration to the shell. Add some legs and a head, and you're done. Now do me a favor, pause the recording, and draw my simplified turtle. And remember, don't worry about what it looks like. We'll use our three-step method of abstraction, simplification, and exaggeration to outline the function and anatomy of the larynx. Please either draw along with me or do the drawings at the completion of this scene. I'll move quickly so you may fall behind. Use the pause function to catch up. I've done this type of drawing in anatomy class using a computer mouse hundreds of times with students drawing along with me, so I'm confident that the drawings are simple enough for anyone. We'll start with speech production. When the vocal cords are loose, the pitch of the voice is low. When the cords are tight, pitch is high. We're all familiar with a potentially fatal anatomic design flaw. Airflow starts in the nose or mouth, then air travels down the neck into the trachea and into the chest. This is the airway, so far so good. Food also travels down the neck, but is supposed to enter the esophagus before traveling to the chest. I call this the pie way. Unfortunately, pie can go the wrong way in the neck and enter the trachea. Two structures that separate the airway from the pie way are the epiglottis, which we won't draw, and the larynx. To understand the speech and airway protection functions of the larynx, we'll draw the cartilaginous skeleton that supports the vocal cords, followed by the muscles that act on the cords. We'll draw these structures in the transverse plane. The most prominent cartilage is the inverted U or V shaped thyroid cartilage at the front of our neck. The ring shaped cricoid cartilage fits inside the thyroid cartilage. The trachea begins just below the cricoid, so we want to keep food from getting below this cartilage, but we want air to travel through the opening in this structure. Small, paired, triangular arytenoid cartilages are perched on the back of the cricoid. The vocal cords extend posteriorly from the thyroid cartilage to the vocal processes of the arytenoid cartilages. 
A membrane called the conus elasticus extends laterally from each vocal cord to insert on the cricoid cartilage to ensure that the airway closes completely when the vocal cords are brought together. The muscles of the larynx are named for the cartilages that they connect. The muscles are paired, but we'll only draw one example of each pair, and we'll only draw four of the muscles, beginning with the cricothyroid muscle. It tilts the thyroid cartilage forward, tightening the vocal cords to increase voice pitch. The thyroarytenoid muscle loosens the vocal cords, deepening the voice. The lateral cricoarytenoid closes the opening between the vocal cords, keeping pi out of the airway, while the posterior cricoarytenoid abducts the vocal cords, opening the airway. After we do our drawing, I normally reinforce what we learned by identifying the structures we drew on cross-sectional images, but we're going to skip that step. Instead, I'm going to show you two QR codes. The first one includes a link to a short comic that will show you how to make and use QR codes. Pause the video, aim your cell phone camera at the code, then follow the directions on your phone. After you've had a look at the comic, restart the video. Welcome back. Here's your next QR code, which is linked to a laryngeal anatomy quiz. You'll learn how to make an interactive self-grading quiz like this in the next scene. But for now, pause the video, aim your phone's camera at the QR code, and complete the quiz. For the fourth question, hold your phone in landscape mode. Hopefully, you've completed the interactive self-grading Google Forms larynx quiz posted at the end of the previous scene. The best way to learn how to make your own quiz is to follow along with this video, pausing to complete each task after I show you how. You'll need to access Google Drive. I assume most of you already have access. Those who don't can ask Professor Google how to get access. In Google Drive, click on the big plus sign at upper left labeled New, then click on Google Forms. We'll label the form Larynx Test and add some brief instructions. To turn the form into a quiz, we have to press Settings, then Quizzes, and select Make This a Quiz. There are other options and settings that you can experiment with, but for now, press Save. Click the drop-down menu to see what types of questions are available. We don't have much time, so we'll make our only question multiple choice. Since this question refers to a picture, we'll add one by hovering our mouse just to the right of our question and clicking on the picture icon that pops up. Then we drop and drag a pre-made image. Next, we provide options and identify the correct answer by clicking on Answer Key. We can add different feedback for correct and incorrect answers, but I use the same feedback for each. We can provide external links to websites like Radiopedia by pressing the link icon or to YouTube videos by pressing the YouTube icon. Make sure that you press the Add button to add your link. Click Save, then assign a point value of 1. Click Done, and then Required. Remember, whenever you see three dots, additional options are available. Clicking the Send button gives you three options for sharing the quiz. I prefer copying a web link and either embedding the link into a QR code or including it in a mass email to my learners. If you want to keep quiz results anonymous, don't click collect email addresses. But if you want to track individual student performance, check this box. You can see that Google has added a space to collect emails. After students have taken your quiz, Google will automatically display the data under Responses and can even create a spreadsheet if you click Create Spreadsheet. This hasn't been a comprehensive tutorial. I encourage you to play with all the other options and see what works best for you.